Okay, and I am back. Um, looks like I need to maybe add my stream to the sidebar, but guys, welcome, good morning. I am DC Dagger, ready to cast for you, and hopefully the viewer count can grow from four. This stream looks like it's being pretty sturdy. Just cross your fingers there, knock on as much wood as you can find. Uh, the free versus effort game did start, but it looks like they're having a restart. Uh, I guess they weren't ready. Uh, both players did cr select the correct race. I know we've had back in the Kespa days a player who actually chose the wrong race and went into the game and then realized it and left and they counted it as a loss. It is the quickest StarCraft game of all time. So that's always fun. I don't have my streaming buddies, Amazing XKCD, being busy right now. I wonder if that's just due to schooling or, or whatever. It is the weekend though, so I mean there's that opportunity to slack off from school. And uh, Flash for the win. Uh, no one knows what he's doing with himself. I'm sure he's busy doing some esports push ups. I know that we've got some good StarCraft games today, but honestly, tomorrow, the round of eight for the TLS Championship is going to be played. And that's going to be absolutely sick. I really hope that you guys can take the opportunity to listen to that English broadcast. Some of the best casters in the scene will be casting that and uh it's it's gonna be uh true touch versus the sockway lancer x versus the wall toss kogan versus flisk and julia versus dragon i really think the game of the night or the day would be uh julia versus dragon those two are playing really well but i mean there's a chance for the disakwe upset of true touch the like incredibly hard zerg player to beat so that's a little bat bit of that there all right, going back into Finding Spirit, going to start off a little bit slowly here. And uh, let me see, I don't want to make sure my mouse isn't going to be visible over the screen. I actually just, I'm always moving my mouse like crazy, so I just want to prevent that pointer from distracting everybody. Okay, so Effort is like a, a super, super good ZVP player these days. He's been playing very, very well. And um, what's to say in the chat? True Touch for the Sockway will be a two-hour PvZ. God, that would be so awesome. I, I really think that uh, the Sockway may be the best Protoss player to upset True Touch. So really, really going to be eager to see how that's going to play out. <laughs> but because Desakwe's PvZ is that long, well, that, I mean, that's true. And and you know what? That's the strategy that Protoss players are going to have to employ against Zerg players. It's, it's really hard to do the early to mid game for a Protoss player. You don't see your stability really kick in until you secure that fourth base. And you're like, okay, I didn't severe, uh, take too many losses. I'm on four bases. This is where I can start to macro out and have that really scary, scary mid-game army. You know, get my upgrades kicking in and just kind of control the map. Because up to that point, Zerg players can really start to control the pace of this game in the early stages. This is why, you know, just the simple harassments with the probe to try and prevent this hatchery from going down. Uh, maybe opening up gateway first, which we've seen on on more maps, getting that zealot out, is really just there to help disrupt the flow of Zerg players in the early game. And, okay, Shuttle's Foot. Let's talk about Shuttle's Foot. I don't know what happened with Shuttle's Foot. <laughs> gonna, gonna need to uh, get more information on that from the chat. Okay, but we are seeing that Forge Expand really is kind of like what the players, ha Protoss players have been doing on Fighting Spirit consistently, at least in this tournament. And even Muli, I believe, went Forge Expand on Fighting Spirit. So just uh, really, these, these uh, Protoss players want to be very cautious against the Zerg players who are really kind of dominating the scene. You know, Visu being knocked out, Effort, Gwimchi knocked out O2 and Group B. That leaves that leaves free and best and best not really known for a good PVZ. If free can come out of this group, I think he has some really good chances to make either the semifinals or go to the finals, where he hasn't been seen. He's kind of too good of a player to have not made it to the finals, in my opinion. But we'll we'll see here. He's got to He's got to tackle this effort PVZ first. If he beats him, he's beat the best Zerg in the scene. Uh, although I will give a shout out to Hero. Hero, while he has good PvZ, we're always worried, or I'm sorry, ZV, ZVP, we're always worried about that. 
uh, his ZVT isn't going to be as good. But defeating Light, who is notably just amazing TVZer, uh, it, it really just lets us go, okay, there's this opportunity. He did lose to C, the online beast. But, but defeating Light, that puts him in a pretty good spot as far as his overall skill goes. All right, and uh, so I know that the GSL is starting to wrap itself up, and we're getting towards, uh, you know, the, the first quarter of the year is just about to come to a conclusion. So I, I think that the Africa Star League that we're all anticipating, since there's going to be two of them, the first one does have to be starting up pretty soon. I really do anticipate um, that we're going to be seeing a pretty big league, and I'm wondering if we're going to see, uh, if we're going to see Tasteless and Artosis return. I, I know that they were, were being interested and they were playing on fish for a little while, so they were getting the skill level back up. But definitely GTR, who's been pretty active in the StarCraft 1 and 2 scene, they've been casting those KCM matches. I, I feel like maybe he might be returning with the Africa Star League, but I, definitely no matter what the lineup is, I feel like it, it, the time is almost ready. And maybe they might stall to try and get Flash in the tournament still, even though Flash said he's not going to play. But Flash also said he's not going to stream and he's not going to return to Brood War quite yet. Did all of those things way ahead of schedule. So I, I think we can really expect a, a lot more out of Flash, maybe even an appearance in a tournament very shortly. Uh, so in the chat saying, best PvZ is top notch these days. Well, I, I hope so. Uh, you know, he's really going to need to have some good PvZ, even though, like, there are a ton of Terrans. There is, a, you know, two Terrans in the last three groups and one Terran in the first group. So, uh, just definitely Terran heavy. Uh, but, I, I mean, I think that Best can still make a pretty good appearance to maybe possibly a round of four. I don't know if he's good enough to win a tournament quite yet. So the uh, the aggressiveness of effort right now is just pretty much nil. He's using these zerglings to kind of scout out at the front here. He wants to see if there's going to be a early zealot push out. Generally, you can get like four or five zealots and just kind of send them across the map, maybe poke into the third. If the third's not well defended, you, you're going to get a lot of really good kills. And, uh, you know, if the third is defended, well, go over to the natural, see if you can see whether it's going to be some sort of Hydra bus that's been hidden out. But mostly the Corsairs are there to kind of sniff out any of that Zerg BS that's possible. And the Zelts are just going to be looking for holes in the uh, armor of effort here. But I like that he took the close third. I mean, this is really just going to make his entire Zerg colony just really tight knit. Uh, tough to take down if he did take a, a main across the map whether it was at the one o'clock position or the eight o'clock position uh, you know it's a pretty good distance to get to and uh, so effort really in a secure spot right now and he's pumping out a good amount of hydras so really kind of skipping um ad muta phase which is good because there are corsairs out for uh for free here and what are we going to see? How quickly are these uh, Hydras going to come across the map? There's no Overlords starting to make their way across the map, though. They would probably be easily picked off by Corsairs. So that's one of the reasons why, you know, this DT is going to be a great threat offensively and defensively. Especially if there's some sort of weird Hydra timing. Okay, but, but the first DT going to make it up to that third base. And, I, you know, it doesn't look like he's going to be doing any damage just because there are Overlords in a pretty good position there. And I love the position of that Sunken Colony. You know, you build that Sunken Colony more towards the middle front. And then all of a sudden you're either missing one portion of the Mineral Patches or maybe not hitting, you know, defending your gas drones very well. And it blocks off that, like, open pathway between the extractor and and the uh, mineral line so really good position with that sunken colony there and using those hydras on the on the bridge there it's gonna make it near impossible for a gt to sneak by unless there's like some ultimate distraction so that's what these corsairs are gonna try and do uh maybe look for some free overlords to to kill off but if he could distract the overlords and kind of peel them away from the bridge then that would allow the dt to sneak in and get in at a different angle efforts were well, well aware of this though i don't think that something that simple of a move is actually going to work on a certain this good 
Okay, so we're seeing a little bit more defense coming down, and obviously we're gonna uh, we're gonna need to see more sunken colonies if Ever wants to be able to defend that third well. Oh, here it comes. There's a lot of zealots in DTs. This is actually a pretty potent mix here. And I like that there's a spore colony mixed in, but I, I mean, there needs to be a sunken instead to help defend this. Spore's not going to be enough. It's just there for maybe detection. Oh, wow. Ever put all his uh, Hydralis in the middle of the map to go in for an engagement here. There are two overlords, so it's going to allow this engagement to be a little bit more favorable for effort but as the corsairs come in here and just start to shred these overlords all of a sudden freeze army is just looking crazy or not uh, yeah freeze army is looking crazy good <laughs> sorry i almost forgot which protoss player was playing for a second there so the high templar following too uh wow just a uh, super good aggression here from free he's got a really good timing between these uh zealots and dts I would say generally uh, Zerg is favored on this map, but Free is looking like, you know, even a good Zerg player isn't able to just kind of daunt him here. He's pressuring still over to that third. He's just going to bounce between that third and the bridge constantly looking where he can pick off the units best. And oh, great storm. Are you kidding? He's going to have to force those Hydralis back. A great reaction from Effort, though, keeping a lot of those Hydralis alive that could have died if he didn't pull that group so perfectly. But a right, really nice flank here from these Hydralis on the right side. And I still think that those Zealots are doing such a great job here. The huge problem is, with, with all this aggression that's coming out from Free, he hasn't taken a third base yet. And he really does need that third Nexus and third Gas. So his economy really is uh, going to kind of go to shambles pretty quickly if he can't... Uh, if you can't take that additional nexus effort, he's already remacroed up. He's been focusing really hard on his army. And since he does have remaining hydralis, he can go ahead and push them down to that six o'clock and apply pressure there, which is going to be that optimal third base that free is going to want to take. So look at that three hatcheries at that th uh, third base. So this is, uh, this is getting absolutely nuts. Yeah. Free's trying to take that six o'clock base, but I feel like effort's going to try and lay down the pressure. He's got the units to just put a perfect timing here. And are these zealots going to be enough to just clog up that ramp and prevent the hydras from getting up on that high ground? Uh, a DT over or a high Templar over at the third base is going to be really important for defense here because he just wants to hit the hydras as they try and single file themselves up that ramp. Oh, but lurkers here. The lurkers, did they just get glossed over there? I'm not sure if Free was able to identify them. Oh, and the Hydra's here going to go pick off this High Templar. Oh, and they actually do get him. What a worthy trade. Anytime you can take out High Templar, it's definitely the best bet possible here. The Hydra's doing such a good job in small skirmishes. You usually see Zerg players that only want to keep them in large groups, but splitting them up into five or uh, four Hydralists at a time is allowing a lot to get done here. And oh my god, he got more height the Templar! <laughs> oh, this is absolutely crazy here. Effort doing so well. And actually almost taking out that cannon too. You know, that cannon's going to be important because there's not observers around the map here. And if a lurker does sneak its way in and kill off that cannon, it's going to be so hurtful. It's going to require several storms to take out these, uh, these lurkers that may apply a pressure to that third base. Yeah, and this is doing really well. The egg blocks here blocking up these zealots from getting in. And the, the hydralists just sitting there feel really happy with where they are. But Free, he is going to have that third base up and running. It, it looks like things are going to be at least a little bit finer for him. But how aggressively does he go for a fourth base? Or does he try and get a, you know, a three base army and just kind of sit on that and eventually go all in? Uh, there's kind of this critical point here. Effort's army is just growing so fast. And he's getting the right composition. You're seeing a lot of links here. And, you know, for a while we saw a lot of zealots from free. And you're thinking, well, links aren't necessarily the best counter. But at this point in the game, once you get up to three bases, you want to have a control group of two or of Dragoons. This is what you start macroing out as a Protoss player. Because you want to deal with lurkers very efficiently. And the counter to that is getting links and pretty good groups. So effort is just kind of reading the metagame and staying one step ahead. But, oh, God. Look at all those overlords that got taken out. Most of the Hydralists that could have defended there are sitting inside their lurker shell. Okay, so Hive Tech is finally coming up. And Effort 
He's set on three bases for a really long time, and he actually was heavily uh, droned up on those three bases. So it is going to force him to finally take that fourth base. I wouldn't be surprised if he took a fifth, too. Because you can just kind of start taking at this mid-game. Uh, Hatchery's just at random spots on the map. Just take a bunch of different bases. And whatever Protoss takes out, they take out. But it's no loss to you. So not too big of a deal. Quite a bit of Dragoons here uh, with those Zealots. But I still think because of how many links have been formed out here. As long as they can en engage efficiently against these storms. This is going to be really dangerous for free. He is, uh, he, Effort is really well prepared for this. But yeah, a few accurate storms could just kill off those Zerglings so fast. It's like whenever you engage Zerglings inside Reavers and one Reaver hit just takes them all out. A good storm could do the same thing. And you can see even on the high ground here, just trying to uh, trade efficiently with these High Templar storms. And eventually this base should get busted down. Effort really isn't going to sweat it here. I imagine that he's already trying to plan out where he's going to send his drones to expand probably up towards the top right of the map oh a lot of good storms here going down to these lurkers got it to trade very efficiently here though because the links are about to come and the storms are not remaining so the links plus the drones oh my god efforts just bringing everything into the mix here to try and take out these units but what's left this was really good trade for free he took out so much with his dragoons the high templars just rape wrecked the uh the lurkers that were in the ground here. So uh, Free not doing too bad here. His core army is still doing really well. Oh, and finally he does have that Observer to come with his army too. Going to be so critical here to keep that Observer alive. I wonder if, uh, you know, a few Scourge could pop out. Probably can't spare the Larva for anything other than just ground attacking units here. But I think that this is going to be possibly a GG here. So much pressure coming from Free. His army too strong. And GG, we do see it. Effort tapping out. Sent to the loser's round. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, guys. It's just possible. It's just possible that I predicted this group correctly. Let's go over to that LR thread. I just I'm I'm extremely curious. Who else may have voted for free to advance first in this group? If you guys aren't aware, there is a live report thread on team liquid always like to promote team liquid look at that you would see the only vote for free to advance first out of this group is me some talent there masterful predictions although if we go to uh liquid bets i'm not doing hawkeyes uh, i don't even think i'm in the top 100 yeah i'm not even in the top 100 i made a lot of really bad bets lately <laughs> I think I got a little bit too reckless, but there has been some pretty crazy upsets. Of course, me predicting Bisu for everything and Bisu losing the big point liquid bets, that's not good either. That uh, really hurts. Down to the core. Chills the bones. All right, that's going to wrap up game number one, Effort versus Free. We're going to see TBT next. So, guys, roll out those blankets, those sleeping bags, snuggle up, get cozy. Maybe make some midday s'mores. You can do those. You don't need a fire. Just s'more it up inside, the, uh, inside your microwave. The best part about putting marshmallows in a microwave, if you guys haven't done this, is they get gigantic. And you can get like the mega marshmallows that are like the size of your fist. And then when you uh, put them in the microwave, don't put them in for more than like five or 10 seconds. You gotta keep an eye on it. Don't want that thing to blow up, explode, burn, whatever. Marshmallows burn smells the worst. So put it in five seconds, watch that thing get giant, absolute ginormous. Here's the best game that you do though, if you do have marshmallows, get peeps. And I know that Easter's coming up so you can do this. Get peeps and point them at each other and put toothpicks in their arms. And then put the microwave on and the peeps will grow and the toothpicks will expand towards their opponent. And if the the winner peep is the one that actually pops the other peep with the toothpick. It's called peep jousting. And uh, Blindrush saying, uh, 157 pounds? Who says that? 
apparently there's a, there's a discussion about weight. Guys, I weigh, uh, I'm weighing a nice 222. Oh, <laughs> liquid bets. I don't know why I was reading pounds. <laughs> yeah, I'm 157 in liquid bets. I, I'm actually doing better in StarCraft 2 liquid bets than I am in StarCraft 1 liquid bets these days. Usually I'm like top 10 consistently in liquid bet 1. I'm, I'm ranked 41 in StarCraft 2 liquid bets. So at least I'm, I'm still a top challenger. <laughs> Sorry, when I saw 157 LB, I was like, eh, I weigh a lot more than that. Maybe you're talking about those fancy kilograms that everybody else goes by. But I'm an imperialist, so I go by the imperial system. Look at that shuttle here. Still, I didn't get the full story on what's, what's the deal with shuttle's foot. Oh, we are starting these games here. It's like it's like a tease. You can almost hear it starting in the background. So this is uh, sponsored by Ninus. And so uh, Ninus is a shoe, shoe company. And it seems that shoe companies just really love being invested in Brood War. So I think that's cool, I guess. The TL bet system will be improving. I promise you, there is talks about an improvement of the TL bet system. It, it's actually uh, it better for like for some of the uh, sister websites where you think about League of Legends or, or Dota. Um, where where you can like click on it and it's just you could actually change your bet before it actually occurs i believe it's a little bit more fancy uh soul investors in brood war <laughs> oh man i love the puns blind rar kicking them into gear <laughs> that's a shoe pun for you guys if you don't know man so I don't know what you guys are getting up to this weekend. I don't have plans yet. Although I did see that new Cloverfield movie, uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane last weekend, and that was pretty good. John Goodman is one creepy bad guy. He's like scary big too, like gi gigantic. So you just definitely don't want to be stuck in a bunker with him if he's not on your side. That's the bottom line. Oh man, go to gamer bets. Yeah, man, I loved go to gamer bets. The problem is, I would always make all the wrong bets. Um, like I would do StarCraft one bets, but I would also do uh, Dota one bets. So I would lose my minerals so fast by betting on teams that I didn't really know or just use pure favoritism and then I would always have to reset my mineral count back to 25 so I could bet again. <laughs> yeah, it's a little unfortunate that they weren't as diehard about Brood War as we are, but at least Team Liquid continues to have the best coverage. Not sure what the holdup is here, but we will have... Um, a couple more maps remaining here. Blue Storm, Circuit Breaker, Ride of the Valkyries, and Neo Jade. Hoping to see more Ride of Valkyries. That map is uh, definitely an interesting one for being so old. What, what was this stat on that? 2005, I believe, was the last time the map was played. Very, very old. Alright guys, what else to talk about during the break? 
Anybody pick up the new Pokemon games? I know there's a lot of Pokemon fans out there. Do you have to catch them all again? You, I don't know what is it, HD versions that are coming out or, or what, but people are absolutely bonkers about these new, uh, and apparently bonkers is my new word, so get used to it. <laughs> They're bonkers about these new Pokemon games. I haven't played one since my original Game Boy or Game Boy Color, I believe, was oh, I what we were that. playing when the original Pokemons came yeah. out. I do have four original Game Boys and one Game Boy Color. I have a Nintendo NES system. Um, I have a Sega Genesis, a Sega Nomad. Uh, what else do I have? I have the N64. I have an original Xbox, a PlayStation 3, and a PlayStation 4. And a Wii. Don't forget the Wii. The Wii's always forgotten, though. You know what, though? I was really pissed because I don't have a GameCube, and I wanted to get the Wii because it was cross-console to the GameCube. By the time I bought it, it didn't support GameCube anymore. How much BS is that, Nintendo? You keep your dollars. I never had an SNES, but I did have the original NES. But that was good enough for me because, you know what? Contra and uh, Super Mario... Three, those those were the best games ever. So just played the hell out of those. I would always grind like infinite lives too. I don't know if you you guys know how to do that in Super Mario, but what you, what you do is you get the the uh, raccoon outfit, and on the second level where there's an infinite amount of goombas coming out of the pipes, you uh, press the jump button as you're landing on their head, and it springs you up really high in the air, and then you tail whip down slowly. And you keep tail whipping down slowly and bouncing on each Goomba. And after you earn a certain amount of points from floating in the air, you, they start to convert to extra lives. And you can just do that for like, let's say, five minutes and you can max out your lives. So that was the best. Because I'm terrible at all the other levels past World 1. I mean, World 1 is super easy. But, uh, yeah, don't touch the ground, though. As soon as you touch the ground, it resets your score, and then you got to get jumping again. So hop in. Because I know a lot of you will just, like, hit the power button and, and then, um, you know, try and collect all the coins and then jump inside the tube and then come back up and then hit the power button, get all the coins, and jump in the tube again. Uh, you could also do that strat level, too, but not the most efficient. It takes you a lot longer. So do your skill jumps with the raccoon tail. Bam. There is that one dude, though, if you guys don't know, who actually did the entire uh, tank level at the end. I know I don't know if you guys are aware of, like, the giant tank train, and then you have the ships. Well, the, the tank train uh, level was completed by a guy who played with a blindfold on, and he used audio cues to remind himself where he is as he made it through the level. I mean, that's, like, some sick dedication. I don't know anything about Sonic Straps. Sonic is, uh, is a pretty solid game, though. Uh, I just don't know where any of the tricks are. I always just tried to do speedruns, although I wasn't any good at those either. I always got stuck in the water. and As soon as you miss like one of the platforms in the water and you just see that 3, 2, 1, you know, can't breathe anymore timer coming up, I just get too panicked and flustered. Ah, I don't know why. The Sonic controls just uh, was too new, but I guess that's Sonic controls only too familiar with like um, standard Mario level platformer controls although Mario water levels were kind of a pain in the ass too I hate those things that just kind of like chase you around they have that accordion move as a kind of wiggle around in your direction and boost towards you <laughs> why is shuttle scary He's the, look, he's the a nice look, nice enough looking guy. Yeah, he does have the mole. I feel like he has a second mole though. I feel like he has two lucky moles now. I don't know if you guys saw it, but there was a zoom in on his face and there definitely looked like a second mole was coming in there. All right, if it didn't take long enough during this commercial break, now we do have our TBT kicking in. Anybody who's watching the VOD, I hope you just skipped forward to this point and welcome. I am BC Dagger, and this is game number two. 
We are watching the Terror Ninus Star League, and this is going to be Group C, Haya versus Sack. And let's identify the positions. So Haya's name is on the left, and he will be at the one o'clock, maybe? Yes, that's him. And so that's going to put Sack at the five o'clock position. And let me see if that's worth adding here uh, to help clarify the positions. Okay. I know that's on giant looking on the screen right now, but we shall fix this. Mm. Alright, I need one more text box. Bear with me, guys. Bam, how about them apples? <laughs> okay, does that look like a random ass score or does that look like positions? <laughs> oh, I got a. Did I get him backwards? No, I got him backwards. <laughs> Hold on. I believe Haya is at the 5 o'clock position. They got it backwards too. Um, so we're, we're blaming them. Let's do it like this. There we go. All you viewers coming in not knowing the names. Now you don't have to work hard at all. Let's see this. Okay, and are we just seeing a zany barracks in the middle of the map on Circuit Breaker? Uh, yes, we are. And guess what, guys? The uh, the barracks in the middle of the map is just kind of like a standard thing that Terrans have been doing. It's not a rush by any means. And so you can pretty much ignore it. That's what I'm going to go towards. You can just ignore it. Uh, there's nothing that is going to happen except for maybe an earlier Marine getting across the map. But instead, that Marine, you know, the additional spawn Marine is actually heading home. So the, the importance of building the barrack, at, barracks out in the middle of the map besides maybe getting out an earlier marine to scout is that the barracks is going to be already across the map so it can start doing its scouting and viewing also so Haya versus sack who do you think is going to win here i think that uh that sack will probably win this just because he has that much better skill level but like as as the chat is saying Haya is the roro of post kespa yeah he just definitely randomly upsets people he has some really good skill, but but uh, I don't think that he's sack worthy, and he's gonna get sacked in this game. So uh, the typical factory expand going down here for uh, Haya as he uh, does take his natural base. base. Both players are uh, kind of on the same page here, getting their expansions around the same time, but ooh, a couple vultures going to be coming out here, an additional marine coming in, but this is all going to get scouted by that barracks. Hold on to your seats, guys. This early game is going to get a little bit exciting here between this TVT. You know, TVTs either last uh, like 8 to 10 minutes or they last uh, an hour. So where is this going to go to? Repairing on that vulture. Nice job by the SCV to help keep the vulture in play here. And now he's going to return to finishing that command center. So I like this just because it forced that building uh, SCV to cancel. Or, you know, stop its construction command for just a minute there. And it's going to put these guys on the expansion page even more closely. 
look at that. This barracks getting a little bit of damage from these Marines. And the starport coming out. Oh, so really fast starport here. And I wonder if it's going to play into being wraiths. Or if we're just going to see dropship play. Uh, just definitely depends on are we going to see that add-on very fast. But three factories coming down for SAC. And I really like this strategy because, uh, you know, SAC... Sack's going to have a lot of factories. If he can defend whatever starport play is going to come out of Haya, dude, he's going to be in a really good position to ground push and take the map. And so consider this. They're both spawned on the right side of the map. The, the ground pushing distance isn't that far. And I, I think it's just very favorable for someone who goes factory heavy, heavy instead of going for starport play. With this additional machine shop too, it's going to allow him to build the necessary Goliaths. He does have that armory already finished, so he's prepared for this. But, okay, there is the add-on. So unless that's going to be a research for Cloak, I feel like we're going to see a dropship come out and just kind of load up some vultures and maybe get some standard TVP-style harassment with those vulture drops. The Goliath's already out though, so Sack kind of uh, sensing that there may be some some tricky starport playing here. Wants to have the Goliath in a good position here to uh, just knock back whether it's dropships or wraiths. Okay, so here we are going to see dropship here. The vultures that uh, Terra was pointing out are going to be inside this natural base. Going to chase away all those SCBs. Great reaction time from Sack though. Prepared for this. And now he's going to bring back his tanks plus his SCBs. He still might lose a few SCBs. Oh, whoa. Losing more than he needed to. I feel like that was a really bad pullback. Why? He tried to use his SCBs to kill off the uh, mines that were getting planted. But uh, it, it just wasn't worth the trade, I don't think. It, it's kind of funny, though. Okay, so at this point in the game, because there's only one Marine, we're going to ignore the Marine. But at this point in the game, like Vultures and SCVs, they both hover over mines. So they can do nothing to kill off these mines without detection. Which means that you may have to try and sneak a tank into range and uh, a you know auto-attack the... Uh, the mine like as fast as possible so that way it doesn't hurt you obviously oh here comes another dropship play gonna be baking it inside of this main base here how many vultures are gonna drop out there's enough vultures here actually from sack to help defend here oh just completely denied that drop nothing gonna get done all right so this dropship play really not working out too too uh fancy for for uh haya here sack's gonna push that back he does have those goliaths but he still hadn't really used his goliaths up until that point oh <laughs> oh this is definitely a good tvt coming right here these uh spider mines just spread out so well around the map oh my god this vulture is sweeping in right now to take out that tank and uh sack well he still has a pretty good army and a pretty good push timing that's gonna come uh hyatt is just going absolutely crazy here to try and take out as many scvs as possible getting inside his main base forcing the scvs pulled again and now this dropship is going to take him out of play Oh, is the dropship going to get taken out, though? These Hellfire missiles aren't attacking fast enough, and somehow this dropship gets away one more time. You know what? Hai has put himself in a really good position. Defensively, he's set himself up really well. He's got a tanks in a nice position. Spider Mine's still really well spread out. And because he still has the threat of that, of that dropship play that Sack has been so vulnerable to in this game, I feel like I feel like Hai has got the upper footing here. Okay, now we're going to see more factory add-ons being added into the mix here. You know, but what's, what's the point of getting all these machine shots before he has a third base? He really can't support efficiently those unless he thinks that he needs to be Goliath heavy. Which, I don't know what kind of information Sack gathered where he thinks that he needs to continue to have more Goliath uh, available factories. So since that's the case, I just feel like he wasted gas a little bit here. Oh, these vultures going to be running in again. One more time. They're going to try and take out this tank. The spider mines are down. And it... Oh, wow. One more hit. And the vulture does come back and take it out. Are you kidding? 
Height is just playing outright crazy. And could you imagine if Sack versus Effort was the loser's match? That, that would just be like the worst case scenario for Effort. We're playing against what I would believe would be the hardest cannon player for Effort to play in in the loser's round. Okay, this is a great push coming forward from Haya. He's just feeling very confident that he can go forward and take out a ton of units here. But the Vulture's in range. He doesn't have the Vultures to help defend, but oh my god, this tank line's been absolutely destroyed. I don't know if Sack is going to be able to win this game. There looked like a third command, the command center was being built up here. Haya is going to be pushing forward even further here. He's going to start to overtake this top right side of the map. There's not much to defend over at the bridge here. In fact, his units defending on the south side of the bridge instead of the north makes them a little bit more vulnerable to be uh, attacked. I feel like just a nice vulture run by could actually take out these tanks really efficiently. And then he wouldn't even have to lose his siege line. Yeah, this is a huge macro up here again. And here comes the push. The unseized his tanks. He's moving straight forward in here, trying to lay the final blow to the army. And GG. Bye bye, casting GG. <laughs> Sack is out. He is going down to the loser's bracket. Meanwhile, Hyatt is going to play free. And what we can only presume is going to be a crazy mind control, Dark Archon style level, 40 minute game to uh, beat the winner's match. What a game, what a game. Can you believe that? Haya playing so well. Those drops at the beginning, I really wanted to discard his drops as, as not very effective, but apparently super effective. Maybe he casted Confusion on... I know that's that he's not a, a mental or a psychic type Pokemon, but he must have casted Confusion on Sack. And Sack hurt himself in his own Confusion. Carpe diem, I say. Okay, so we're back to Shuttle's face here, and because we were talking about that earlier, he does have two moles on his face, but I don't remember there being a mole on the right cheek. I only remember the one above the lip. So maybe that's twice the beauty marks, you could say. You know, Shuttle needs to shave his eyebrows. That's really what needs to happen. That would help his uh, creepiness level if he had to have one. All right, guys, the losers match uh, possibly going to be played next. Let's see what the uh, the general format was here. No, it's going to be the winners match, and I believe it's going to be Ride of Valkyries. Ride of Valkyries, such a cool map. The Rorschach map is what I call it. It looks like an ink block test. Uh, played back in 2005, like I said. Lots of old classic players playing games on this map. Isla Boof, July, Savior, Anytime, Rock. <laughs> what happened to the Rock? Does anybody have intel on him? Because he did return, I believe, and, and was playing some games. But um, ever since, uh, you know, early last year, he really hasn't been part of the scene. I guess Boxer also played on that map too. You can't forget him. And if you guys missed out, Yellow was streaming uh, him playing some StarCraft Brood War. So maybe he's caught the bug. Maybe he's feeling like he needs to be playing more Brood War too. Oh, game number three. Here we come, guys. All right, welcome, welcome everybody to game number three. I am BC Dagger, and we are watching the Terror Ninus Star League Group C of the round of 16, and we are jumping right into Free versus Haya. So Free gonna be spawning down at the bottom left, and Haya spawning down at the bottom right. We saw really interesting uh, 
you know, we saw a really interesting game with uh, Bisu versus Mind on Right of the Valkyries to start off Group A. And and here's the deal. Bisu went carriers. He expanded to the to the middle island map. If you guys don't know where the island expansion is, it's directly at that 6 o'clock position. And it's legitimately an island surrounded by water. And uh, he just went for too many things at too many times. You know, trying to jump into the four bases while trying to get carriers with no ground army at all, plus letting Vulture harassment just absolutely destroy him. So, hopefully Freeze learned some lessons about how to plan this map and not do anything that BC did. Uh, that's pretty much the lesson that exists there. Oh, so going back to this Rock stuff. Rock has his own business, so I guess that's what's keeping him preoccupied. What's with all the Protoss players running businesses? Movie running his own business, too. Uh, so I guess, uh, you know, these young entrepreneurs really trying to get themselves kick-started because cannot play StarCraft forever. Or can you? Yeah, you can. Let's, let's, uh, let's see you can. The simulator coming down here for free. And, uh, you know... Hein played that game really well, but Free played his PVZ really sweet too against Effort. So I think like I think this is gonna just be a really even solid matchup. Uh, probably a good 22 minute game, let's say, unless something crazy happens. Here comes the uh, scouting crossing paths. Here it looks like the probe and the SUV. And they're refusing to high five each other, just kind of give the cold shoulder as they work their way towards their opponent's bases. Seeing the barracks out, you know, this is one of those weird maps where you can actually uh, wall off the ramp with a barracks and a supply depot. And it looks super, super silly because there's just wide gaps between the supply depot and the barracks. But yeah, you only need two buildings to adequately wall off. But I, I know that applied when mine was at the left spawn position. I'm assuming that the ramp on the right side of the map will have the same rules applied to it. But you know, as in StarCraft, all spawn positions are not created equal. Definitely every every location has its disadvantages in some form or fashion. The same way that Reavers fire better going to the top right than they do to the top left. <laughs> How about that? StarCraft is just, it's a golden egg, isn't it? Oh, so these uh, Marines are probably sensing out that there is a, a probe nearby. They're going to try and kill it off. Uh, this is a very smart play. That's something that we, we would generally see from like a smart Flash player in form. Where he's just kind of sensing that, hey, there's a scouting unit out here. Let me just go kill it off while I've got these Marines not doing too much. Um, a couple more Marines, and uh, you know what? With this factory at its timing here, it's going to be a good siege expand, and uh, pretty good. Uh, going to be pretty needed here, because with this dragoon coming in for some harassment, even though it did have some really bad AI engaging these Marines, you know if, if the micro is good, a free could pick off these Marines. Another dragoon. The the travel distance isn't too far between these bases i mean it's a decent distance but uh really you can reinforce pretty quickly with additional dragoons if you want to apply pressure to that natural base okay so the two dragoons here are kind of just sitting at this natural but like i said because of this factory expand once this tank comes out it's gonna be pretty easy for him to just kind of push this away unless free has some like godlike micro that we've never seen before <laughs> he uh you know free's just a, a really macro heavy player all right here comes the push Look at how many Marines we got. Six, seven on the map here with that tank. And here comes the push. <laughs> He's just going to run those Dragoons away. Not even going to bother taking that engagement here. Uh, but there is a random probe that I think is about to die. Nope, no, no. He gets away. So a really late natural, um, all things considered here. And oh, some decent micro picking up these Marines. But I mean, the tanks are just getting too much damage off here. Oh, this is going to be a push timing here. 
Oh, four, four Dragoons in a pretty good spot here. And uh, actually, all these Marines are getting picked off. And uh, okay, so if Sack doesn't deal with this really well, I'm sorry, Haya. If Haya doesn't deal with this really well, he's going to lose these tanks. And that's going to be a, a, some pretty heavy losses here. It means that uh, Free would be able to turn around, macro up maybe a, a, even a Zealot into this mix. Oh, <laughs> nice Spider Mine. And uh, be able to go for some pressure on the natural. But right now, with that Spider Mine taking out the Dragoon, I think that. Uh, High is in a pretty good position to continue to push forward here. <laughs> Terror is everybody's friend. That's a pretty good comment. Uh, okay, so there are uh, uh, tanks and vultures now pressuring this Nexus here. And I can't believe that the micro for free wasn't good enough to kind of keep this at bay. He picked up so many rains so efficiently. But as soon as spider mines came out... I mean, things became troublesome. Losing another Dragoon here. I think that this is going to be a quick win for Haya. I mean, it's just possible. Obviously, even if he loses this Nexus, he can stay off one base. And, um, you know, macro back up and take back his natural. Uh, with the Vulture coming in here. Going to get a few probes down. Okay, so, so things are okay, though. The Nexus is still alive. Unless he gets a really nice run by from Vultures. I think that Free's still in a decent position. He has a few Dragoons out here. And his his uh, natural economy is going to kick in soon enough. Oh man, people, what's wrong with you asking for Roro and Shine to come back into StarCraft 1? No, Roro, or Shine, yeah, he's so bad that he's become an observer at this point in the game. Oh, a nice push in with these Dragoons picking off that tank and trying to micro themselves away from these SCVs. I really actually don't like that he pushed in with the Dragoons, uh, but he is still reinforcing it. So, oh my god, this is a huge turnaround if he can keep these alive. But letting the SCVs engage into these Dragoons, some really poor micro from free. This is what I was talking about. He, uh, he has good strategies he can employ, decent micro, but wow, he's just letting these SCVs get a lot of hits off. There's no spider mines here though, and the spider mines would have been a good job dealing with these dragoons, especially since the tanks are, um, you know, taking a long time to get out. Where's the siege mode? Try and put a tank on that high ground at the cliff overlooking the command center. That would be a really nice position to help keep the siege tank alive. But no, he's gonna have to like uh, slow micro that tank away because he's trying to repair it here. And these dragoons are just going crazy. What a reversal here! Free going absolutely aggressive, and I think that he may be able to at this point try and take this game. Oh, this Dragoon getting caught in there again. Really poor Micro once more having that Dragoon caught. And with that final tank out, it doesn't look like more aggression may be in hand. I'm trying to watch this Fog of War here to determine how much is coming across. But with the hard coloring of uh, Free's army, it's hard to see how many units are actually going to be macroed up here. Four Dragoons, though. They are in range. SCVs need to get pulled to help deal with these tanks. Oh, one tank does go down right away. Meanwhile, these Dragoons are going to be sneaking their way around the right and now flanking into this tank. It does go down! Are you kidding? Once again, we're seeing that the tanks are lost. The SCVs are all that's left to help defend this natural base. I honestly don't know what to say at this point. We are going to see that uh, Shuttle Play is actually going to be brought in here. So uh, I guess he's going to finally give up the natural. So that way he can get more aggressive on the main base. Or maybe he's just going to bring a Reaver in. <laughs> a Reaver could be very deadly at this point too. There's not air defenses. He's been constantly taking down the turret at the natural base. So if a shuttle can bring over a Reaver really fast here while this aggression is going on. Imagine what the Reaver Scarabs would do. Just absolutely shrek all these SUVs. Oh, we've got lots to talk about if you guys want to go down the Blizzard path. There is that possible new patch that's coming to Brood War after, what, seven years? So a seven-year late patch to help the uh, uh, Brood War, you know, performance on several operating systems of the future. Uh, this is kind of a lackluster attack here. The SCV, or the Zealot, just coming in here. But, okay, now Zealot Speed looks like it's finished here. And so now with another Zealot engaged on the tank, the tank will go down here. But eventually the Zelts get cleaned up too. Tank's playing too strong in that moment. Now that he had three at one point. Ah, oh, finally an additional third base. Really late. 
and I'm wondering if Free thinks he could still win this game in the early stages. Yeah, there was a, another balance uh, balance uh, patch thread that that people were discussing about what they would like to change in Brood War. And I am curious to see what you guys would like to have improved. I think a lot of people would want to see scouts become a more playable unit. Oh, but here comes the drop play. The shuttle finally making its way in towards this base. I told you that Reavers were going to come out here. Oh, this Reaver taking so much damage. Finally gets lifted up free with the slow micro here. And I still think that the Reaver is alive. Okay, so <laughs> the Reaver is still just uh, only slowly getting ticked at by these Vultures. So much SEV damage was taken in that attack here. And that shuttle is going to get out safely too. Wow. Okay, so so Free's looking like he has a pretty strong upper hand, and Haya, he is that one-hit wonder again, where he took out Sack pretty efficiently, but now, now he's just kind of going back into his fail row row stages. This is a beautiful map, isn't it, guys? I would have liked to see actually Free, because he does have that shuttle, just take a probe and drop it into the island expansion. It can't be pressured, and that's where he should take a fast four. At this point, getting that additional unharassed nexus would be super beneficial to him. So there's definitely that out there. But Vulture play now is available to Haya because he's able to secure his second base. That means that he can really start to run these Vultures around, try and pick off more probes if he can. The third not super well defended here. And uh, actually, this natural was pretty nicely defended. A decent amount of Dragoons cleared out those Vultures so quickly. Here, here comes a push. Is anybody else confused by this? The fact that it seems that uh, Haya is pushing out again. I know he wants to control that high ground here. And it's really important if he wants to take that third over at the 3 o'clock position. But he's way too exposed. And this is going to be a goon reaver attack pressure to try and take out these tanks that aren't even in siege mode. <laughs> oh my god, this scarab's just wrecking it. And GG. We're going to see Sack or Haya uh, tap out here. <laughs> oh my god, Shuttle is just doing jumping jacks here. So excited to see that a Protoss player advances. And we're going to see one of, the one of the dragons from the old Kespa days advance to the round of eight. Oh my god. Is Terra going to get Shuttle to do more dancing? This is this is how we degrade ourselves. This is how we lower ourselves to emptiness. <laughs> I love how we just see like a toupee is worth a pair on top of Terra. A cheap toupee. All right, guys, I will be taking a quick water break, and we will return into the next game. It's going to be a loser's match between Sack and Effort coming up. Hope you guys are ready for it.
중간에 저 높임새까지 올라가고 싶은 거죠. 음. 아, 아 너무 기가 되는 한이 정도? 어, 이 정도? 어. 아, 내가 원래 처음에 진짜 1 경기를 자신이 너무 없어가지고 정우한테. 어. 그래, 근데 그만큼 나도 포스가 정우 어려워. 아니 감사합니다. 아니야 아니, 아니, 번호 아니, 있어. 아니, 어, 최근에 근데 좀... 내가 볼 때는 이 오전 한테 짤려. 어? 지금 최근 떨어졌네. 내가 가만히 있겠다. 내가 가만히 있겠다. 이승을 해야겠다. 지금 대용이 떨어진 마당에 누가 우승할지 모른다. 지금 이 마인드. 내가 볼 때. 인정하지. 인정하지. 인정해. 인정해. 아, 어, 인정. 내가 볼 때는 지금 선수분들 다 자기가 우승할 거라 예상을 하고 있어. 왜냐하면 김태경이 지금 떨어졌기 때문에 지금 영원한 극한 강자가 떨어졌어요. 예? 자 일단 이렇게 해서 좀 전반 축하드리고요. 8강에 포부를 좀 들어봤고. 자 이게 진짜 대박 연결이다. 메인으로 가야겠다. 너 여기 옆에 까까리도 있어. 자, 시작하겠습니다. 보여주세요. 아, 야, 피곤이 좀... I have returned. All right, guys, welcome back. I am Beastie Dagger, and we are going into Terra Nine of Star League Losers Round of Group C, the round of 16. And I welcome you all. It's just me today. I'm sorry that there is no co caster to balance out my zaniness, but that's okay. It's just going to be constant speed casting. Because that's about all I do. You know, I want you all to know out there that it's okay to be a casual StarCraft player. Because I'm like the most casual StarCraft player there is. And be just a diehard Brood War fan regardless. Another shout out for the Team Liquid Legacy Star League that's going to be played tomorrow. I really hope that you guys can support Foreign Brood War. I, I, I thought the numbers were doing really well. You know, I, I'm seeing uh, stream numbers 300, uh, 300 plus viewers at a time watching, uh, you know, Sale and, and uh, Cat's Paw go at it as casters. And, and so I really hope that you can continue to support them. Both those casters, I really enjoy. They bring a high level of casting that um, the scene really needs, both these players. I think... You know, Sales got got his legacy knowledge, and then Cat's Paw, he's a pretty active player these days. So he really, um, you know, he really has a lot of knowledge that he brings to the table, too. So I hope you guys can get excited about them as casters. I mean, I think Sale will always love. He's just immortalized as one of those foreign casters at this time because of uh, him filling the void when Brood War was in his really weird stage. All right, the countdown has finished. Guess what, guys? We are on our next map, which is going to be Blue Storm. And we've seen Blue Storm being played out in two previous groups with Movie versus Zero. And uh, Zero doing a great job of just kind of wrecking Movie, which is no surprise, unfortunately. And then we also saw Gwenchi versus Light. So uh, now we're finally getting a different matchup here. We're going to be seeing a TDZ. And uh, Sack versus Effort should be a pretty good one. Man, if Effort loses here, I think the two like most highly anticipated, highly rated players would have been eliminated from this tournament. If Bisu and Effort are both eliminated in the round of 16, what does that say? What does that say about the uh, the Vance Star League and those results? Um, you know, how they finished. Does that mean that the scene is just that volatile? Or are these players just not that far ahead of the rest of the pack? Uh, you know, I just hate to see that, that the, the top two players of Vance Star League are so vulnerable 
to the rest of the players in this round of 16. But I think that the, the level of play is getting pretty even. But we gotta see here, if Effort gets eliminated, not, not gonna be too many Zergs left. You know, Hero and Zero obviously advancing, but I don't think that Larva has a good chance of advancing out of Group D when he has to play against Mon best and last. He's going to have a really hard time getting to that round of eight quarterfinal stage of this bracket. So Blue Storm is is definitely like one of those zany maps. And, and uh, I, I think that some players feel really uncomfortable playing on it just because of its uh, weird configuration. And if you look at the natural base, it actually has two different entrances. It has one really small entrance where where small sized units, Marines can get through. I believe Vultures can slip their way through, um, Zealots. But then you have to take a longer path to get more larger units through, tanks and whatnot. And they have, and Dragoons, they have to walk their way around. You know, to get to the ramp. Actually, I think Zerg is at a huge advantage here because most Zerg units um, from early to mid game stages really can make it through that small path for harassment here. And, uh, but we're seeing this is where, uh, you know, Effort really wants to prevent this SCV from getting in here and being able to drop down a bunker. He has to be in just the right amount of open space to be able, be able to get that bunker down. And that's what he's going for here. Brought another couple SCVs, and he's actually, oh my god, this e Effort's drone drill was almost beautiful here. He's trying to catch as many units as he can, and as he brings them in stack, he's just going to release them in an attack mode, and then he's going to click the mineral patches to hover them back to his units, and then go back for this strategy again, just playing backwards and forward. Oh, and the Vulture can't get through. I was wondering if they were a little bit too large. Okay, but the, the Zerglings coming out just in time. Effort played this out beautifully. His micro with those drones, uh, just really, uh, you know, keeping the SEVs at bay. And now with these uh, Zerglings coming in here, gonna be able to attack these Marines and completely eliminate them, putting himself in a pretty good position. You know, what's the, the transition that's going to be able to come out here for Sack now that Effort has defended this and he's got his natural down? He's been relatively unaffected at this point. Oh god, these Ling's doing so well eliminating all the Marines here. And he's just constantly going after the rest of the Marines. They need to be pulled back right away. Sack in such a terrible position at this point. Still sitting on one base. He doesn't have a good wall off. So he can't really block these marine or block these zerglings from getting inside the base. Okay, so this two racks play just uh, <laughs> not not really paying uh, panning out for him at this point. He still can produce a decent amount of marines at this point in the game, but I feel like effort. Maybe he shouldn't take his foot off the pedal because he's doing so well with his zergling control. He's hunted down so many marines already, and without medics there, these marines are just going to get chewed up pretty quickly. Okay, this is going to be looking like a very close battle though. If the lings engage right now, can they pick off all the marines? They've got to stay clumped, and they got to get themselves in a corner where they can't be surrounded from behind either. Oh, they're so well spread out now. This is perfect for Effort, who's going to be able to pick off every single Marine here. Is Sack just going to call it right here? Is he going to end this game right now in the early stages? I almost feel like there should have been a bunker built inside the natural base. <laughs> to kind of help retreat these Marines. And then he can micro in and out of the bunker as he tries to hold at the choke point. But right now, there's just not too much that uh, that Sack is doing to prevent efforts, just annihilation of him. <laughs> Even Terror going crazy here. So there is a sunken laid out, and I, I'm wondering how fast the third base is going to come out. But the Spire play, the Spire play is going to be so strong. The Extractor at the Natural not finished quite yet. But I imagine that he's going to push three drones right over to that extractor and try and get as many mutas out as possible. As long as this uh, marine count can continue to continue to dwindle here, there won't be the anti-air available. Because he can't, you know, does Sack have the resources here to turn up his main base and defend it well? You know, and if he can't defend his barracks, 
then his barracks are going to get taken out by these mutas, and then he won't have any production facilities to continue to defend with marines. Oh, okay. Now the lings that are getting inside right here are able to go through this these two barracks here because it's not a good wall off on that uh, top side of that ramp here. <laughs> I guess the one thing he can do is just uh, it's gonna single file force these zerglings through if he does if uh, effort does try to attack here. So Sack does have that one thing as his advantage. A decent uh, amount of marines and medics here at the barracks. He's got to keep those alive. The mutas are gonna be done very shortly and start heading across this map. I mean, this is this this is the infamous map where Jadong learned how to micro two muta groups at the same time at two different bases. Even Zerg has had great matches on this map where he's gone crazy with his muta micro. So you know, this is definitely going to be heavily anticipated as soon as those units do make it across the map. Still, we're seeing that the Turchi, the, tur the sorry, the turret situation is still looking very low for Sack. He's not going to have much to defend off these two bases. But what I think we're um, ah, oh, can't even think of the player's name right now, so I'm going to just throw that point away. <laughs> Anybody who knew who I was trying to think of would be ashamed of me. Anyway, so the mutas are out in a pretty good flock right now. And if Effort can micro this beautifully, this is going to be the end of the game. Oh, I like that he did pull his barracks back. He knows that he has to defend with the Marines. And he can't defend on too many locations at the same point if it's just pure bio with no turrets. Oh, he's going to try and catch the units on the far side, though. Oh, man. The, the Muta's getting just out right in time. All right, the is going to be sweeping back in from the right side again, looking for this opportunity to attack. You can still see that the base of Sack's still relatively weak here. It's going to come down to, again, a few more glaive shots here. Can he take these out effectively? The medic is behind the army, so it's not going to be hitting the glaive shots right away, but it's just an A move in. No micro needed to kill off that small group of units here. And the rest of the units, the Marines, are moving in very slowly here. And, uh, these are really nice glaive shots coming off on these SCVs. And the Effort's going to be able to get away. There's not enough Marines to spread out and kill off these mutas efficiently enough. Off these two bases, still continuing to apply pressure like crazy. Oh, GG. Effort does it. Sack is out. Sack eliminated from this tournament. Still one more TVZ left for Effort, but a great game by him to defend that early game two racks pressure and transition into Muta so efficiently. All right, we got one more game to go, guys. And we're going to be finishing up this game on the map Neo Jade. No Protoss playing on Neo Jade in this final map, so I mean we're going to be in a good situation there. Both players probably going to play pretty straight up. So for those of you who missed the results from Group A and Group B, uh, Mine and Zero defeated Bisu and Movie to advance out in Group B. C and Hero advanced out of Group B and. Oh my god, we are seeing the wonderful stomach of Shine in the background. And would you guys prefer that I do this too? I mean, would that make my cast more interesting? Is if I put a camera on me and I started doing jumping jacks and running back and forth to the wall? I mean, this is capable stuff. I am physically capable of doing these things, but... <laughs> uh, I just, I guess I don't bring the same passion that Terror and Shuttle do. Oh my god, he's rolling on the ground. <laughs> oh, did someone yell frag out? <laughs> oh, this is the most amusing part of the breaks.
Yeah, you see, that's the problem. Uh, you know, reading the chat here, Tara makes every everyone around him as crazy as he is. The problem is when I co-cast with XKCD, he's the mellow guy. But if I had like a total ADHD dude that I casted with, God, you know, that would really just amp me up a lot. So it's a good thing that we have XKCD. That's usually my co-caster because we can keep things out just like a moderate level instead of letting things get out of control. But also casting in the morning definitely chills us out. I think if we were also casting in the afternoon that uh, maybe we might be screaming a little bit more. Plus, also, guys, I have a wife, and I don't want her to leave me. <laughs> if I lived on my own, though, you can assume this whole entire cast would be me with my shirt off. What would that provide to the viewers? Absolutely nothing. I love that Bakaru is in the chat. Um... Welcome, and, uh, you know, I'm really sad that you were not able to advance in the Team Liquid Legacy Star League, uh, which is, guys, going to be played out tomorrow. And if you guys aren't aware of that, the round of eight is going to be played, casted by Cat's Paw and Sale. And uh, True Touch versus Bakaru was played out last week. And uh, True Touch was able to advance. I believe it was 2-1, though. It's always tough. You know, ZBZs are tough in general, and uh, True Touch has been playing on a high level for so long. So that was definitely a really tough matchup to have um, in, in the round of 16. Oh, and, and uh, saying that the game's lagged out, um, you know, that's always tough. And, and I, I will say, though, if a player like Bakaru says that the game's lagged, then they actually lagged. Uh, I know a lot of people um, are used to hearing maybe Julia, who complains about the lag in every game, no matter what. <laughs> and so it's hard to know when Julia actually had a laggy game, or is just pissed off at scam. But, uh, yeah, you know what though? Uh, we, we absolutely love that Bakaru has been playing. Uh, consistently th throughout so many years of StarCraft now, even after the Kespa days ended. And uh, so it's, it's been really important to have a lot of these legendary players that continue to play. You know, the fact that, that Lancer X is, is still, you know, competing in this tournament, still around. Um, I think it's really cool that Koget has made it to the quarterfinals. Um, Desakwe is one of my favorite Protoss players, so I am truly, truly pumped up to see how Desakwe does against True Touch. It's going to be an, an insane ZVP for sure. Alright, let's get back to what's going on here. So, a quick recap. Free defeated Effort, and then he also defeated Haya in two amazing games, really well played by him, advancing from Group C of this round of 16. And then we have Sak, who's knocked out of this tournament after losing to Effort in the loser's round. And now it's going to be Effort versus Haya. Guys, I welcome to the cast. I am BC Dagger on the microphone, solo casting today. None of my compadres are able to join me. But it looks like we have solved the lag situation, so my stream is up and running and good. And I should be available tomorrow to cast Group D. Yes, we're just blazing through these groups like crazy. Terror, he doesn't like the delay. He doesn't have, you know, commercials and, and airtime slots that he has to fill, like on a TV station. He can do it the way he wants to, which is two days, you know, both weekends filled up with StarCraft. Couldn't be any better. And if you guys don't know, Ninus is a shoe company. Style start, Ninus. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> okay, so, you know, we're on Blue Storm here. And actually, my, my ZVT knowledge is, is not necessarily the best for Blue Storm specifically. So let's, let's take out, out a map here and... Uh, I'm sorry, not Blue Storm. This is going to be Neo Jade. Let, let's get that right, first of all. But uh, I, I really wonder how hard it is for Zerks to, uh, you know, expand across this map, take cross map bases. The the difference here is that if you do take a ex uh, main expansion across the map, let's say because we're seeing that, um, you know, Zerg is at the top right. 
if if uh, Everett decides that he wants to take the eleven o'clock main, that he has to defend down ramp. And generally, what uh, Zerg players like to do is lurker block and hive lurkers sitting on top of the ramp because the vision is hard for them, and Marines actually have to creep up the ramp to get close enough to see the vision of the the lurkers, even with scans, and get their attacks in. So. It's just really hard, but attacking down ramp into a main base, oh, a little bit more easy for bio forces to engage and harass third bases over there. So I, I think that is where it's just going to kind of drive the ZDT in a different direction for effort. So again, we're in the final game of the day, and we're seeing that the spawning pull down. The expansion going up for uh, for effort at the same time here, and there's no two barracks as hidden around the map, so this is going to be a little bit less aggressive than we saw in the last game. I feel like Sack was really frustrated, and that's kind of what it, why he went for the aggressive two racks. He, he also knows that that playing against effort is like the worst case scenario possible for him. Uh, for a loser's round so he could kind of just went for that two racks build to see if he could get away with the easy win and boost his confidence but uh you know effort saved us away uh, saved us from a tbt as our final game and you know i gotta thank him for that <laughs> All right, so we are seeing that the additional command center is going to come out here. Both these players are going to be getting themselves up to two bases. And uh, so we're, we're seeing the gas mined up here. Are we going to see Muta play again from Effort? He did a really good job in the uh, in the last game that we saw here. And Muta play is still going to be pretty solid. He's getting his macro hatch up between the, the natural and the main base. And, you know, and when you see PVZ on this map, the one thing I do like about it is, and, and when I play on this map, is that you could go ahead and just take groups of zealots and just, like, rush them down the ramp and, and harass the main, just bypassing all sort of static defenses at the natural. Um, but if you go bio first and, and maybe more of SK Terran style, and then you know you don't have access to units like vultures that can do something of a similar stature where they can just kind of you know push their way past all the front static defenses and harass drone lines in the back and i feel like we will see uh, you know heavy bio into a mid-game mech switch it's just way too much of the you know standard meta game these days and uh is not going to risk doing anything too crazy So the additional extractor being put up at the natural base definitely is a pretty big indicator that we're going to see mutas come out off these two bases. And uh, with that creep colony come down, it's just a, it's that precautionary creep colony. It's not even going to go to a sunken right away, but it's absolutely needed because you never know how strong the, the Terran is going to pressure you with bio. So you want to have it there. And, uh, you know, with the wide ramp or with the wide choke point here, there's really no point in trying to wall off any more than what you do with the supply depot there. And if you're wondering about the supply depot placement, it really pushes the Zerglings out and they have to really take a roundabout pattern to get to that ramp down into the main base. So it's just like that little extra hump right there for the Zerglings to have to go around is just like the perfect amount where uh, you know, a nice set of Marines can pretty much pick off anything that tries to run by between the supply depot and the command center. Okay, so with the decent size of uh, bio forces that are kind of accumulating here, you gotta wonder if uh, if there's ever gonna be a brave push out from from uh, Haya. But you know, I, I think that he, oh, even though he's going up the four racks right now, which is gonna be really good when he tries to micro out just a ton of marines here, um, he, he may get forced back. Depending on this muta timing, if uh, Effort can come out at the right point, oh, losing these Zerglings would be so detrimental. You you want to have those Zerglings out and available because if there is a bio push that goes cross map, you need to engage with mutas and links at the same time, or you're going to lose way too many mutas. So these links, they're not even worth engaging and stalling. You just want to poke in to keep an eye on visibly where that green group is. So you can keep gauging how much time it's going to take for those units to get across the map and where you can most efficiently attack in with the mutas. 
But that is going to proc the uh, sunken colony to start being morphed at the natural base. Wants to have that with those additional minerals. Going to just make that happen. And I like that he hit his links over to the right side. The meters are out are out now, and you know I don't believe that High is going to be too far behind on building turrets inside of his main and natural base. He seems to have taken everything at a pretty standard uh, pace, and there looks like a north, uh, you know, a northwest turret here. A couple of them, three at a really nice spots of this mineral line. Effort's got to totally give up that position. He can't attack in that direction with the Mutas. He doesn't have quite enough of a flock to even take out one turret fast enough. Uh, when you think about the level of damage that he's going to take in. Okay, but the Mutas are going to come over sweeping towards the right. And, you know, while there's tons of space here, with, <laughs> with uh, the level of turrets and placement that we saw at the natural base, I just imagine that High is going to set himself up in an equally good position inside of his main base too. Oh, the Marines are stimmed though. They want to get an engagement in here while they are stimmed because you, you don't want to waste too much medic healing energy uh, chasing after Mutas without getting any damage done. That stim timing always so perfect here. And with the Lings engaging, this is exactly what I was saying. He wants to find that one opportunity where he can trade efficiently. And I think that his Mutas swept in at not the right time to take out enough bio forces. So high is still being comfortable here with four racks macro right now. This is gonna be a really strong push coming from Haya. And actually, I'm wondering if he put down a fifth rack at this point because it just seems like he really wants to try and do some heavy damage here off these two bases. Oh, we're seeing lair. It's the lair is done, but it's gonna be way too late if he's gonna rely on Dark Swarm to come out to help defend here. Of course, he's going to have to build with the filers first, get the right amount of energy. The consume upgrade takes a bit of time too. So this is going to be absolutely crazy here. I don't know if Effort's going to have what it takes to stop Haya. Can we get another Zerg advance into the quarterfinals? We'll see right here as the bio forces are just kind of teetering on the decision to engage at the natural static defenses. Ooh, I like this, that we're seeing the starport come in. We're going to see the, the science vessels at least. And oh my god! Are you kidding? All those links, all the mutants, all the zerg are just wrecking everything. <laughs> oh, the sarlacc pit has opened and has just consumed Haya. Effort going crazy right now. In fact, he's already got his third base up at the top left corner. He's got the lurkers on the low ground, and the the bio forces are not going to be strong enough to uh to basically take out that base. This is amazing. Are you kidding? Effort just showed us something that we never see. That was just godly engagement, so efficiently traded. And now these brains trying to stem in forward, want to be able to take at least that one of those lurkers out. Okay, oh, there's one left, and a couple marines, three. There's no Nidus. He can't, you know, bring himself over, but he does have the meters in just the right placement. Effort playing out of his mind right now. Can you believe how reactionary he is? This is the ultimate Zerg play if I've ever seen that. Oh my god, this ZVT already just going insane. Highest got to start thinking, that was my game plan. I was hoping to, to do some critical, critical damage with my bio forces. I staved off too long. I didn't even engage well. And I lost all my bio. Now I've got to start thinking, SK Terran, Mech Switch, where's my third going to come? Uh, it's just all all really got to be confusing for Haya at this point who just lost the army that he thought would just take him you know nicely into this quarterfinal all right so i love what effort has done if you look at the entire map here between overlords and zerglings he's got like a perfect line of vision and just he has a vision contained on Haya. Obviously, that can't do any damage, but a vision contained is going to allow him to see every single point of attack. All these different positions that Haya can move out are just going to be absolutely picked off from effort. Effort here, he knows that there's another huge army push, and it looks like it's going to be going over to that third base. So at this point, with the uh, hive tech being done, though, defilers are going to be ready. The Nidus should be already over at that three o'clock, uh, the third base here. So yes. 
I think that effort should be able to defend the push, whether it's going to go to the left or to the right. Haya behind this, though. He's got to be thinking, I've got a lot of pressure. Let's get my third command setter to a third base right now. Let's expand while I'm applying this pressure because I'm looking pretty good right now with my tank bio forces. Actually, I think he's about two or three medics short. There are way too many Marines and not enough medics. And so the damage is going to be absolutely critical here. If, uh, you know, he loses those medics uh, in the early fray. Oh, so the lurkers are in a pretty good spot here. The tanks, though, <laughs> the tanks are the critical pieces here. If he loses the tanks, then he's going to lose this push. Once again, effort doing a great push here. It looks like the, the Marines are just in too close of range of these lurkers. Going to be losing so much. The Mutas are going to be able to defend here. And meanwhile, he's jumping through the Nidus to defend at the top left, too. These Marines, they're going to get taken out. The Dark Swarm is going to push the Marines back. The drones are going to have to hide under the Dark Cloud as the lurkers workers try and get in range and continue to eliminate any of these aggressive forces from Haya. This is just absolutely crazy. The terrorist Terran going insane here against effort. The mutas do come in and it's just one of those things where when you see an uh, Zerg player keep these mutas alive for so long that they can bounce back and forth with just that additional help between the left and right side of the map. <laughs> you know that the Zerg player is playing really, really well. So the fourth base already going to be going up. A hatchery just picked up at the 11 o'clock position here. An effort just looking fine and dandy. Haya, where's that third command center? He's probably having it built inside of his base right now, but where to float to? Probably towards his opponent's natural base, which is where we see the command center going right now. Because he's going to want to set up a nice strategic siege line and hop himself forward towards his aggression at that natural base. It is looking like the mech switch is almost real. With these science vessels, if they can stay alive, they're going to be critical points of this army that can help kind of deal with the Muta flock because Irradiate is going to need to, you know, just eliminate these Mutas real fast and, uh, you know, take out any defilers and lurkers throughout this. Okay, so Haya, he looks like he's re again. He's got much more Marines mixed in here. He's got Vultures. He's got, uh, <laughs> he's got a lot. He's going to try and push out one more time and get some more damage in here. Continue to apply this pressure. But effort, I feel like he can re an army so fast that this is just kind of a ridiculous thing here. If he loses these science vessels, I feel like it's going to be game. There are too many science vessels just up there without enough defense. The scored shots, it's going to be coming down to this. So many lurkers trying to morph. This is the one timing that the Marines have to try and push in here and try and break down the natural one more time. The drones blocking the bio forces from getting down into the main base. And the science vessels can't move in to help out with the Marines. The Scorch were pushing across. I think that that high up microed really well though, took out those Scorch. And so now the science vessels can push forward again and help out with the bio. Still, you know what we're not seeing? We're not seeing any fire bats, but the vulture attack. <laughs> what are we seeing here, guys? The vultures are, are just eliminating so many of these drones. Nothing here to help, you know, uh, <laughs> defend because the Nidus Canal was taken out at the top left base. The additional expansion now has the Nidus Canal, so at least more units can get ported over from underground. I haven't even had a moment to drink my coffee, guys. This is just getting absolutely insane. I oh, can't believe it. Effort still holding on with four bases now. Third command center though sitting up for Haya, which is going to be a breath of fresh air here. He's continuing to just stay aggressive. And I love, I love this Terran style. Something that we really don't see from a lot of other Terran players who just kind of don't know what they're doing. Instead here we're seeing three irradiates go down right away. <laughs> oh, oh, this is getting brutal. So much pressure at the front again. Are we going to see more sunken colonies? Meanwhile, there needs to be a decent defense here. Oh, he put the mutas in the guardians. No way. I was just thinking earlier in this game, if he put those mutas in the guardians, there's actually a really nice avenue to attack here. And the guardians are just going to start shredding up this third base, forcing the lift on the command center here. And there's over mining at the main and natural now of Haya. He's in such a bad position. We can't get those, uh, those guardians under control. And the fact is, he just burned a lot of his irradiates 
on uh, on lurkers and defilers, and the guardians did not get irradiated. They're still going to be fine. So maybe a wraith, maybe a Valkyrie. Um, I, I would say just produce a wraith since you do have the starport there, and a wraith can be produced pretty quickly. There's not going to be anything to really deal with it unless he force scourges. But okay, the science house is coming over here. Maybe maybe they got the energy. A relatively cheap spell, to be honest. So the radiates are going to go down, and the uh, the guardians starting to get eliminated here. Okay, so now we're looking at a three base scenario again. Everything's just kind of starting to equalize, and uh, you know this is what we expect from Haya. Haya brings the best games anybody's ever seen. It doesn't matter if he loses or wins. It's always quite exciting. He just doesn't want to stay a passive parent player. Not his style here. And uh, <laughs> there's not much defending that third base. His command center is very vulnerable at that 3 o'clock position. I wonder if Everett's going to try and exploit that again. But no way he's going to go back into Mutants and Guardians. That was his, uh, you know, kind of one, one trick pony here. But he does have speed overlords. There might be going for drops here. What's going to be inside these overlords? Is he going to have <laughs> Zerglings just pop out here? He's going to be going for the drop here. Lurker's coming down. It's going to block these SCVs. In fact, the, the uh, Defiler there is going to block any SCVs from being able to run away because they are just going to have, you know, his body there to keep them in. And a lot of SCVs did get killed off. The command center getting floated away here. And uh, now, no more third again. But what's to defend this natural base? Haya, he's re macroed up one more strong army. Oh, <laughs> so many lurkers coming across here. I think Haya might be at the end of his rope. He's kind of fighting an uphill battle at this point here. If he can't break this natural base, it's got to be so frustrating at this point. In fact, he's abandoning his tanks one more time. Marines, where did you go? They hightailed it before the tanks would even unseach. And now they're going to be making their way, hopefully, to a safe place away from this Zerg army. A nice Spider-Man kill on the Defiler, but Plague Goo on two science vessels. All these tanks getting plagued up. <laughs> oh my, we're seeing the low health coming down on these mech units here. Effort, he is just relentless beast. He will not be taken down by Haya. This is his tournament. He is the reigning Vance Star League champion, and we won't see this champ fall. Same way we saw Bisu fall, or Sack fall, or Hero fall. It's just this constant trend of people who win tournaments not doing well in the following tournament. And effort though, he's going to break the curse right here. It looks like it's possible. Going down to that 3 o'clock position again. Look at it. Look at the minimap. The yellow. It is invading here. <laughs> the command center still lifted. No mining being done. Dark swarms. This is just crazy, guys. <laughs> oh, six bases for effort. Can a Terran player come back from this deficit? Another economy getting macroed up. This is just absolutely, absolutely bonkers. And look at this. We are seeing Queen play. Uh, typical Wujin star Zerg play. I love it. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Not Wujin star. <laughs> he is um, he is a uh, uh, NB. Uh, not X. A CJ Anta Zerg. <laughs> Had a little bit of a memory lapse there, but it is Wujin Star's signature play because it is Queen's. Oh God, the Queens really can't do too much here. Just trying to, uh, you know, just distract these Marines as Scorch try and eliminate these side vessels. These are really like the one part of the army that are doing well here, and uh, they're just wrecking so much. If he can eliminate these side vessels, though, there would be such a huge dent in this fortress. <laughs> Look at the lurkers at the third preventing that command center from landing down again And I think maybe the command center maybe even got killed off and the cows are on the field The cows are gonna be starting their way across so many ultralists were produced at the top left here And this is just gonna be a huge flood of units starting to make their way down the map I, I think that I think that he's just gonna flank this army effort knows that he can take the army out now that he has the critical amount of units and okay here come the spawn brewing ability go to the right go to the right observer okay we see that a couple of the tanks already spawned right away and just one tank remaining these Marines they are just brave for staying here to defend what is just left of highest army but he really doesn't have that much left how much can the mech army defend against? A lot of tanks here in a pretty decent position, but <laughs> the Ultralist engaging. GG, GG, Effort does it. Effort wins. Haya is going to get eliminated from this tournament. 
free effort. The champions of Group C advancing into the quarterfinals. What a game, guys. What a game. Can you believe how that played out? Oh, effort. He put he put so much into that game. Played that so beautifully. I feel like any Zerg fan has just got to be extremely, extremely happy. <laughs> Watch that game over and over. There's so much he did right that you're just going to cry because he played that so beautifully. And you may never, ever be able to play as well as effort did in that game. Absolutely, absolutely sick. And hi, don't you know? Give him some credit. He had really strong pushes. His tiny attacks were, were beautiful. But the problem was, ever just <laughs> he showed the power of the swarm. Ah, what an ending to the day, guys! I'm so happy that I got to watch that game. <laughs> oh, so good. Thank you all for watching. Uh, good night to GWU, Blindwire, thank you, Subflow, Tasty Minerals, Lemon Poker, Fury Drawn, uh, Bakaru, everybody else who's in chat, we love you guys. Oh, now there's a phone interview, of course. Alright, that's going to wrap it up for me, you know, what a nice two hour period of casting, so beautiful. And guys, guess what? Uh, tomorrow... There is more StarCraft. Mong Best Last Larva. Who do you guys think is going to advance from that group? My uh, my early game analysis tells me that I think I think that Best and Mong are going to advance from this group. I really do. But I mean, this could go anywhere. I don't think Larva. I think Larva is going to be last in this group unless he does some miracle. But I think Best and Mong have a good chance to advance. Mong is, is just such a solitaire player. He always gets past group stages. He he seems to have just a knack for being able to to get past you know a series of one-off games. Best of ones are are really his uh, go-to key. All right, guys, I'm going to be signing off. Thank you once again. I am BC Dagger, your host for today. I don't know if I will have a co-caster tomorrow, but regardless, um, you know, I will be there. So take care and...